Okay, we're going to move on to talk about the projection theorem directly. And so in looking at the projection theorem, we're going to let E be the projector, the projection operator, the self-adjoint projection operator onto M. Remember, we said that if the, for any subspace there is a projector that projects the entire space onto the subspace. So we're going to now define M star to be the projection of Y onto the subspace. Okay, and so E does that projection. So again, here's, here's our, our illustration that we're using to kind of give us a, a sense of what's going on. Remember, we're talking about general vector spaces, and, and, and yet this is a specific example. So here's this vector Y that is not in the subspace. Okay, and M star then is the shadow, and that is in this plane, that is the vector that is closest to this vector y. It is the vector the closest. And so here we can see it's the projection onto the subspace. It's the shadow. The light is being cast, casting a shadow, and that shadow is m star. Okay. And so the error then that we're looking at is is the difference between y and m star, where m star is in the plane. And so we've called m star the projection okay and it is it is on the plane then we're going to let m be any other element or any element of the subspace so here's the projection theorem we're going to use this lemma this lemma says that the inner product of y minus m star with m star minus m is 0 for any m in the subspace any m in the subspace so recall that m star is equal to e times y. And so note that m minus m star. So remember, since m is in the subspace, then m is equal to e times m. Remember, the projector projects back onto itself. And so anything in the subspace getting operated on by e is back to the same point. So m is equal to e times m and m star is equal to e times y. So m minus m star, which is in m, is also equal to e times m minus m star. So when we actually look at this inner product, we have y minus e times y, and then m star minus m is equal to e times m star minus m. By by the property of the adjoint, I can take this E over to the other side of the inner product adjoint. Okay, so that's just the property of the adjoint. And I recall that the, since E is a projector, it is self-adjoint, so e, e adjoint is equal to itself. When I multiply it out, when I multiply this out, I get E minus E squared. But because E is a projection, E is equal to E squared. And so that's equal to 0 times y. And so I just get the, this inner product is equal to 0. OK, so that, that's a lemma that we can use uh, to prove the projection theorem. So here's the proof of the projection theorem. I'm not going to go through this now. Again, this is, this is, I will talk about this in the lecture about proofs. So poof, we move on. All right. So. In general, if we have some vector y, we can always write it out this way. We can, we can multiply by the projector plus i minus the projector. So in other words, this quantity is just the identity operator. Okay, and, But because of distrib distributive property, this is equal to e times y plus i minus e times y. This is a projection onto the subspace m. This is actually a projection onto the subspace of subspace M perp. Okay, so so in this case, if if our M is the range of A, then Y M is equal to E times that, and Y M perp is this. So we can we can easily show that. All right. In general, for any x in the subspace, x is equal to E times x. And since E is self-adjoint, then we have this. X 
inner product with ym perp. So ym perp is i minus e times y, x is equal to e times x. So here I'm, I'm looking at uh, n dimensional vectors. But again, I could move this e over to the other side and do the inner product, but otherwise I can do it like this x adjoint e x adjoint e adjoint but e is self adjoint and so again we get zero this holds for any x in the subspace so what this shows is that the y what that we called y m perp is indeed in m perp that is it is orthogonal to m it is orthogonal to any x in it so here i chose x to be any x in m and y, y m perp was orthogonal to that. So what this says is that y m perp is orthogonal not only just to this x, not only to any x, it's orthogonal to every x. So if it holds for any x, it holds for all x in that set. Therefore, y m is orthogonal to this entire set and th therefore is in the orthogonal complement. So. A summary of the projection theorem. Giving a subspace M, we can find a projector onto M. So again, a projector is such that E is equal to E adjoint is equal to E squared. Okay, we have these this these two equations basically define a projector. So for a given Y not in the subspace, to minimize this, we choose the projection of Y onto M. That is M star is equal to E times Y. That's what the projection theorem says. So the projection theorem requires a projection or a projector, and, and so we have that. So we can, again, decompose any vector x into a vector that's in the subspace plus a vector that's in the complement of the subspace. Okay, And it turns out the vector in the subspace is the projection of x onto the subspace and this is actually a projection onto the uh, the complement of M. And you can go through and show that this, so here I've said this is a projection. You can go through and show that this is indeed a projection. That is, if I take this quantity and square it, I will get this self itself back. If I take this quantity and take the, the uh, Hermitian transpose of it, or the adjoint, I can see that it's self-adjoint as well. Also, for any subspace M, we can find the projector E. So if we find us, in order to do this, we find uh, a basis for that subspace. In other words, we set, find a set of linearly independent vectors of this subspace. From that, we form the operator F from the, ba from the basis that we get. Okay, we find the operator F from that, we obtain the adjoint of F. From that, we form the inverse operator, F adjoint F inverse. Then we form the projector, which is F, F adjoint F, quantity inverse F adjoint. So this is how we can find the projector. So we actually have a formula for obtaining that projector. So this is the basic, basic uh, projection theorem. We're going to talk a little bit next about applications of the projection theorem.